this is Tisha Heiter, Vice President here at the Aura Group, and I have alongside me my dear friend, Artis Stevens, President and CEO of Big Brothers Big Sisters of America. Thanks so much for your time, Artis. Tisha, it is my pleasure to be here with you. Thank you so much oh, for inviting me. Absolutely, absolutely. We couldn't wait to talk to you on this Partners Perspectives, where we get to know a little bit about the, uh, the clients that we work with. Um, but you were recently featured in the Chronicle of Philanthropy where you were talking about how you felt called, especially in these last couple of years to step into leadership. Um, I, I just, I'm so curious, what was behind that? What inspired you to make that statement? Yeah, well, I, I use that term very intentionally, right? Call, and, and, and part of the, the reason why I teach is because I come from an upbringing where my family has always been involved in, in community service, but it was always through the church, right? So my dad is a preacher. My granddad was a preacher. Uh, everybody asked me if I was going to be a preacher uh, when I was a kid. Uh, and I'll never forget because I, I, I went to my dad and I said, hey, and I'm seven years old, by the way, <laughs> at this time. And I went to my dad and I said, everybody said I'm going to be a preacher like you. I said, is that true? And I'll never forget what he told me. He said that everyone has their ministry in this world you have to find yours, right? Wow. And for a kid who was at the time seven, it was so like empowering. It was so freeing in a lot of ways because it was this idea that I didn't comprehend it this way back then, but I look, I look back at it now. It was this idea of being able to break through this idea of a generational kind of sort of setting of you had to be something or be in this box uh, of what was sort of established for you. So that sort of really empowered me to continue to go through my career with this idea of a, a commitment to service, right? My ministry wasn't the church per se, but it was a ministry of giving. It was a ministry of empowerment and particularly towards young people. And, you know, that carried me on, you know, for a while and through a lot of different organizations and through a lot of different experiences. Uh, and I will tell you, it was uh, the time frame of when Ahmaud Aubrey right, was, was murdered. And when that happened, it was in Brunswick, Georgia. And, and I state that for everyone who, who's watching and listening because I'm from Brunswick, Georgia. Um, wow. I, was, I was raised in that community. Uh, my dad was a pastor uh, in that community. And what hit me so much was absolutely, it was another senseless act of violence based upon racial hatred. But it was even more personal for me because it was about someone whose family, like it was a small town. We all knew each other. It was connected yeah. as well as the street he was murdered on. I walked on many times when I was a kid growing up in the community. So it had this personal connection and it didn't make me question that whole point of what my dad said about ministry and was I following the right path. It made me question if I was doing enough, if I was contributing the way that I should. And from there, it was interesting because when I started to step back and question, you know, where I was in life, you know, not that I was doing anything that I, that I didn't have passion for, but it was this keep this continued question of was I doing enough? And it got me to the point where uh, not too long after that, the opportunity with Big Brothers, Big Sisters uh, came along and it was like looking in the mirror. You know, I saw myself in this organization. I see myself in the kids that we serve uh, because those kids were a lot like me growing up and the things that they face, the challenges that they face, and the opportunity that if only they're provided, the platform, the relationships, that they have all the potential in the world. Our role is to make sure they have the voice so that they can change lives, they can do the things that they do incredibly well uh, in terms of having their own direction, their own empowerment. And with all those reasons, it led me to this place and I know that I'm here with purpose. That's incredible. I mean, I'm already <laughs> almost in tears um, because I love the passion that you have for the organization. And it's, it's only been a year, right? That you've uh, been, been there. I feel lucky um, and blessed that at Org Group, we've been able to walk alongside you for a, a good portion of that journey. Um, and I'm just curious, based on your many years uh, in the nonprofit world, what difference do you think it's made having a partner like the org group? It has been phenomenal uh, and it's been a significant difference maker. Let me tell you how, right? So when you come into an organization, you start as a new CEO, right? So a couple of things were going on. 
one, you're starting as a new CEO during a pandemic, right? Where you don't have the opportunity to get out and meet your board members, connect with your constituencies, partners, your network. Uh, so we, you know, are everyone who's working at a local level, young people. So first of all, I'm limited in that sense, right? I'm the first black CEO of the organization. So, you know, there's a sense of uh, all the joy and the, the barrier breaking that going up, but it's also the pressure that comes right, along all with that. you. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, so let's, let's just do a triple here. I'm a new CEO, right? So this is a, a new CEO and I'm trying to sort of find my own path and, and, and take over these reins, right? From a CEO who's been uh, in the organization uh, for several years. So you got all of those different dynamics coming on. So here I am trying to ensure that the organization's mission can continue to advance and grow, that we can bring the right type of stakeholders and constituencies uh, around the table for us. And then what I saw very clearly was to be able to do that, we had to make sure that a couple of things were really important. One, the leadership from the board. When they hired me, they said, we need you to come on and inject a sense of urgency and purpose into the work that we're doing to really be centered around what's our focus and our, our efforts around justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. And that we needed this idea of being able to take that and translate that urgency and that message into how we convert and bring more relationships around the table to invest in our mission, right? When we looked far and wide, I couldn't find a better organization, a better partner than the org group to help us to do that, right? And for me, it was really important that we had a group that one had history and equity and being able to build bridges and understanding what the marketplace looked like, who had in, uh, equity and understanding the idea of how you work with organizations like ours that were these larger national organizations that had affiliate models based on them. And we had to look and say, who brings the level of values that we wanted to work with in terms of a partner? I'm looking at you, Tisha, on that, as well as wow. being able to say that we had a sense of finding a partner that we knew was going to be about the competencies of getting the work done and executing at a level, a high level, that we felt that was indicative of the type of partner that we wanted at the table. Our group represented that for us. It's helped us to drive a lot on our board level, as well as helping us to drive a lot on our development work, which has been tremendous over the last year, and I think has helped us to significantly grow in our work. Oh my goodness, Artis. I'm so humbled to be a part of your journey, and you've had so many big wins this year. I just, I'm so curious, what are you most proud of? Mm, it, you're right. It, it has been a lot. I, it always comes back for me to people, right? Um, I'm most proud of the people, and, and, I, and I look at it in this way, right? And you've been very instrumental in, in one side of this, that I came into this organization and we had one, uh, we had two people, excuse me, two people of color on our board. Uh, we were about at about 10 to 15 percent on our board. We're now approaching about 40 to 45 percent of people of awesome. color on our board. Um, and the reason why that's so important is not just simply about placing people of color. We, we said we wanted to make sure that our board was representative of who we serve, how we serve, and bringing the best and the brightest, right? And there's best and brightest all the, all the way around and with so many different backgrounds and experiences, uh, you name it. And one of the places we wanted to start was on the level of really thinking about race and ethnicity, because that was so in the forefront of where our work uh, has been leading in, in some of the things that we've been doing. And that's been a signif significant achievement for us. Same thing with team. We wanted to build the right type of senior leadership and capacity across our organization. And I'm excited that over the last year, we've been able to really build the capacity of our team to be able to drive towards the type of work and big outcomes uh, that we were seeking to do. And then the, the, the third one that I'll talk about is our network, right? Um, and one of the biggest things that I wanted to do coming in was I went, I started a hundred day listening and learning tour um, when I first started in the organization. And one of the biggest things that I heard from our network is that we needed a very intentional plan regarding how we grow and how we create more quality outcomes for our one-to-one -one mentoring mo model and beyond. So we spent the time over the last year building a strategic plan that's gonna allow us to do both, 
right? To grow intentionally and targetly to open the circle and widen the circle for more kids to be served who need us most. And then secondly, to ensure that we're moving the needle in their lives so that we see the transformation that's happening with them because of the relationships that they have in their lives. And that's because of the great local folks, folks that we have on the ground, but it takes partnership between a national office and local affiliates to ensure that that happens well. And we got great people and my job is ensuring that we empower them. So those are the three aspects that, that I'm most proud of, but they all center around one thing and that's people development. I love it, I love it. And I mean, the organization is about people. It's about young people right. and it's about um, people who want to invest in the lives of young people. So tell me out of all the priorities that you have, what, what would you say comes next? Yeah, well, there, there is one of the biggest things, you just hit it, one of the biggest things that we are challenged with, uh, not just within our organization, but in our country, right? If you look in our country today, one in three kids don't have a sustained mentor in their life, right? On our waiting list today, we've got 30,000 kids that wow. are waiting for mentors, 30,000 teach them. And That's amazing. It, 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 is, it is amazing, it's crazy. And what we believe like fiercely is that no kid should wait, right? On the positive relationship, no kid in this country. And we're doing every single thing that we can and it, and it means how we partner, it means our delivery model, it means how we get resource, but very importantly, it's about that relationship. And we need more mentors, right? So one of the biggest things that we're doing right now is mobilizing more mentors through our partnerships, through our engagements, through our experiences, um, our local folks and training them in terms of not just recruiting, but creating environments that people want to come to. They feel like they belong and they feel inclusive. Uh, one of the things I'm most excited about is uh, we're launching a campaign called the Big Draft uh, Campaign. It's in partnership with the NFL and it's all about recruiting more men of color, right? That 30,000 I told you about, most of yeah. those are boys. And most of those boys are boys of color who are seeking men and particularly men of color uh, in their lives. Like we welcome and we want everybody to the table, but we also know that we have to have more representation uh, in our pool. And very importantly, what this campaign does in cities all across the country is it allows for that major platform that in the NFL, marketing channel, uh, communications, uh, talent, uh, athletes, uh, to really be a platform that raises the level of awareness of the work and the need uh, through the Inspire Change uh, work that we're doing with them and social justice work. And if we can continue to do that, it gives an opportunity for more people to get engaged and not just feel like you're helping kids, but I will tell you, when you get involved as a volunteer, what most of our volunteers say is that they're more impacted than the young person when they experience. But uh, that effort is launching in February and goes from February all the way until April. And the whole idea of the big draft is that the idea is when the NFL is drafting a new round of players, we're also drafting a new round of mentors to support Big Brothers Big Sisters. That is so cool, so creative. And I think that's exactly what you bring as a new CEO, having this fresh perspective of ideas. I know I can imagine that there are probably folks um, that are watching that aspire to be a CEO of a nonprofit, especially in a national nonprofit one day. Um, what advice would you give someone who is looking to get into the business? Yeah, uh, the number one piece of advice that I give most people that ask this question is, remember the most important thing and that's bringing your authentic self to any situation, to any experience, right? Uh, sometimes what can happen is, you try to fit a mold, you try to fit what people tell you is what it means to become a CEO. There is no mold, <laughs> let me tell you yeah. that, right? There, there, there are certain things you, you certainly wanna learn and competencies, but what, what I've found over my career is that when you bring yourself, when you bring your POV, your sensibilities, uh, your passion for what you do, and then your growth, thirst, and hunger for learning, and wanting to help and make people better, that those are powerful elements to be able to come to the table. Remember about mentorship, right? I'm, a, I'm in a mentoring organization. Forming a community of mentors 
that are mentors who you see as reciprocal in your relationship giving, right? Not just to help you, but right. the sense of how you contribute and to help them and to build and grow together is the other thing that I think is, 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 uh, is, is foundational in the work of growing and becoming um, a CEO or any leader in the organization. And then the last thing I will say is take your mission very seriously in the work that you do, but don't take yourself too seriously, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's about like, you know, teacher, having fun, having yeah. fun. And remember, remember the essence of the idea of that people are driven by the heart, right? They may think with their head, they're driven by the heart. It's about relationships and it's about remembering why you started this journey in the first place and never lose that that as you walk and you continue along your path. Wow, that is incredible advice. Um, Artists, it's been so fun talking to you. It's been so fun sharing what I've known uh, with others through the partner's perspectives. And um, again, I just wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you for entrusting your organization um, with the org group. It's been a pleasure to serve. Uh, it's been my pleasure, my friend, and I appreciate you so much and your leadership and your vision. Let's continue to, to do this thing and help more kids. Let's do it. High five. Ah. <laughs>